Hey folks, uh, it's been two years since I've had the Tormach 770, the uh, PCNC Series 3, yeah. Um, uh, anyway, it's been two years since I've had the mail. I figured I'd give you a rundown. I know I did a one year review, so how's it holding up? Maintenance issues, all that stuff. Uh, let's go through it. Um, really been enjoying Path Palette. I was always a uh, fan of Linux CNC anyway, so that, yeah, all right, that, I, I was already in for that. But uh, really enjoyed the updates they did. Just did a probing video, just got a probe, so I've been playing with that a little bit, really enjoying it. It seems to uh, make the workflow a little quicker. Um, so something to think about, especially since that's cheaper than a Heimer, which is what I started with. Anyway, uh, the mill itself, as it came from Tormach, I did limited stuff. I, I bought the stand, <clears throat> went with a manual order, bought the controller, the touch screen and keyboard I supplied myself. Uh, the one big upgrade I went with was the power draw bar. Don't regret that one bit. Uh, do it again any day over an enclosure. As you can see, I've got enclosure 2.2, let's call it. Um, I noticed real quick that I wanted something up to catch the chips, keep them from flinging everywhere, especially when running a shear hog or uh, doing an adaptive, it just spits chips all over the place and they'll go right out of the pan and end up in a 10 foot diameter from the mill. Uh, so get something to close it up. I started, since I'm using the fog buster, not using uh, flood coolant. I started with plywood that I coated with, what was it, the, 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 the flex seal or whatever, the, the guy that makes boats out of screen doors, you know, on TV. I got a gallon of that and coated it. Still have three quarters of a gallon left, probably, um, just to seal that wood from any moisture that would get on it. That uh, that worked well for the time being. I still had the front open. I hung a shower curtain across it because that was ten dollars. You know, it, it, it kept it in, let me get in and out. Because at the time I was a little more focused on doing production, so that really helped control the chips. Worked great. Um, Seven, eight months into owning it, I had an issue every once in a while where the x-axis would stop moving. Of course, the controller thinks it's still going, and then the Y will kick in and drive it right on into solid stock and it not be where it thought it was going to be. And there goes, I mean, even three eight cent mills, they just snap them right off like it wasn't nothing. So uh, that, that was a bit of a problem, and that problem progressed and kept getting worse. Uh, finally, I contacted Tormach. Of course, after the warranty had expired. Um, that's on me, I should have contacted them right away. And, uh, but I was still new. I didn't know if it was me doing something wrong or the machine. And then once I was sure it was a machine issue, uh, you know, it was a little too late. So anyway, um, got tired of breaking in mills doing that and, and scrapping parts. So did a little research, ripped the uh the motors and the lead shine drives out and uh so I, I pulled all the drives and the stepper motors off replaced them with hybrid steppers i now sell a kit plug uh check out all.org if you want to upgrade yours uh and of course this being linux cnc i was able to increase the speeds on it um even the jogging speeds i have them turned up to uh i'm gonna turn up to 180 inches per minute they want to go too fast because you, you, you get you, it goes quick um the rapids i've got running 300 inches per minute and i'm loving it, it makes uh short work of some of those repetitive tool paths um but yeah that, you know that's pretty much it i've got uh like, like i said i went minimal on the machine i bought enough tool holders Uh, to, to do what I thought I needed and then still had a few spares. Uh, I bought some cheap ones off eBay from China, the ER20 collet holders. Uh, so I have those that I use occasionally. And uh, yeah, that, that's, there, there, there's no, not a whole lot involved with getting going on in the first place, but, but yeah, the, ma making the enclosure was definitely an upgrade. This one came off an old Kitamura that uh, I scrapped out and I, I made it work on the tour mop here, but, uh, but yeah, 
the accessories were simple. I went with the power draw bar, I went with the fog buster for coolant, and got the stand because it's got to be somewhere. I did get the foot pedal for the power draw bar because I know I don't want to be doing this. And why I put this on here, I, you know, that, that was <laughs> not smooth on my part. But anyway, would I buy it again? Yeah, I, I want to say I was in 12, 13,000 for the machine whenever I bought it. I, I did get the Superfly, I did get the, uh, the uh, Shear Hog, and, uh, and of course, lots of carbide from various vendors. But, uh, but I've, I've been real satisfied with it, especially now that I've got it to where it runs and it's, it's dependable, I can trust it to, if it's gonna go, it's gonna go, or it'll fault out and you know, let me know. But other than in speed testing, I've not had it fault out on me since I've installed the new drives, thank goodness. And yeah, that's pretty much it. It's, it's a great little machine, love it. It's uh, served me well for what uh, I was doing. Now, it, it, it taught me that I don't want to be a job shop machinist. <laughs> that's uh, that, that, that's pretty straightforward. I, maybe if the world was a little different, I, I could if I wanted to, but I, you know, I've got a decent job. I do some of this stuff on the side. It, it works great for me. And you know, I'd, I'd love to have a UMC 500 sitting in here. You can make all kinds of cool things. One, one off, one done, that'd be great. But I don't need it. I don't, I'm not making that kind of stuff. So. The stuff I want to make, I can make right here and it, it live the good life. So, definitely worth the money. Uh, like I said, be careful on your your options you pick because some of them, you know, why, why are you going to pay, you know, a bunch of money for a keyboard when you either probably already have one? Use that one. When it dies, then, you know, jump on Amazon, get you a silicone indestructible keyboard that's foldy and floppy and use and then use that so there's uh there's definitely time and place to spend money and time to save money you know it's my jog shuttle it's not a Tormach it is a shuttle express shuttle that I got off of eBay a long time ago before I even bought the Tormach I used it on my seed so what else I got around here to talk about kill a minute or two uh, as you see, I've moved all my stuff out of the, I don't keep it in the machine itself. I got my tools down here in the toolbox, cutting tools, drills. Uh, I've got a rolling cart over here that I used to keep tooling on before I got these guys. Now most of it sits right there. And uh, yeah, I used the machine arm, hooked it to the toolbox to hold my monitor and all that right there in place. I am thinking about getting a different solution for that. Uh, went with aftermarket lights because the price was right on those. I got those for free. They're good lights. So I put them on, you know. It's, uh, I, I, I do a little uh, industrial surplus equipment selling on eBay and stuff, and they weren't selling, so I'm like, I know where I can put them, and I put them to use. So you can definitely uh, be penny wise. Of course, you can also be pound foolish. So there's a uh, there's a fine line to walk. You just got to make that decision as you go along and best of luck to you because once you get in there and get to using it, then you'll know what you want to use and what you don't use at all. And you know, I can tell you all the whiz bang great things to have. I've got a, 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 enough stuff back here. I could rig up a flood cooling system. Haven't had the need to yet. Um, would like to, but then again, I got to deal with the mess. So, uh, with intermittent use, the fog buster's been great for me. I cut mostly aluminum, a little bit of steel here and there. And uh, yeah, that's, that's my life. This is, th th this is fun for me, this is what I do. Make a few bucks on the side and, uh, and life is good. So no reason to stress it and have to be uh, fretting making a machine payment on you know, thousand, two thousand dollar machine a month. And uh, you know, you gotta run product through, so even for folks that decide to finance something like this, the payments, you know, it, it, it's like buying a car. So you can, uh, you can definitely get it inexpensively. Just make sure you got a way to pay for it either personally on the side and, uh, or, or it, especially if you're learning and completely new to this, because there's a steep learning curve. You know, you got to learn your CAD, you got to learn the cam, and, and then you got to learn the machine characteristics, work holding. Um, I really enjoy my piercing, piercing pallet system. 
that's been great when I was doing production. Now I got it set up for a little more one-off stuff. I got a, I drilled it out for the Shars vice that I was using originally. Now, now I've got picked up a Saunders Machine Works mini mod vice. I believe that's what they call it, the quarter inch version. It's been, uh, it's, it's been pretty handy to have around. So yeah, use some mighty bite stuff. You know, that, that's, as you get in there and get to using it more, you find out more and more what you need and what you want to do with it. That's, uh, of course, the biggest hurdle is getting the machine and getting some metal and getting some carbide and start cutting. That's the best advice I can give you. Um, you can always add stuff on later. Tormox happy to sell you an enclosure today. They sell one to, to me today just like they would two years ago. So um, that's what I wanted to do. They, they're, happy to, they're happy to sell stuff. It's what they're in business for. It's what we're all in business for. All right, I think I rambled way too long, so I want to go edit this and cut it down, make it a lot shorter, and uh, throw it up on YouTube. Hope you guys like it. And uh, yeah, like I said, if you're interested in a set of hybrid stepper motors for your Tormach, either 1100 or 770, but I don't have anything for the 440s right now. I got something coming for the Slant Pro. I got to do a little more research on that, get set up for that. But uh, yeah, just reach out. I can, Instagram here on YouTube or uh, you can find me on Facebook in the Tormont groups or you can find me on my website, allofit.org. Till next time, y'all have a good one. Bye.